When the citywide ban of gatherings more than five people is sadly unaffecting any of my live performances, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Hey Sean, can you do a video on how you go about phrasing? I'm completely lost on the subject and would love an idiot's guide. Thanks as always, love your content. Okay, cool, let's talk about phrasing. Now, in a lot of ways, phrasing is kind of like a personal taste and just kind of like how you really go about saying something on a guitar, right? Just like if you're speaking, your phrases is how you put words together, same thing uh, on an instrument. Now, I wanna use an example of a solo I just laid out for some new music coming up because I think it's a very short example that I can really kind of piece together in a way that I can tell you exactly how I think about it. it sounds like this. So that example was actually an E flat. We're gonna do this uh, in the key of C just to make it kind of easier for a lot of people conceptually. But we're gonna break this into four parts. We're gonna talk about the chords behind it, all right? So even though that's kind of like a synth track, the chords behind the first part are just C to F. So like a C major to F, okay? And that repeats twice, so C again. I'll go through the whole progression. Next part is a G minor 11 to F again, and then G minor 11 back to F. Okay. Now it's important to know about the chords. So really, that progression is C F C F G minor 11 F G minor 11 F. Now again, I'm kind of thinking in the key of C already, but technically that's in the key of F, where C is kind of like the five chord. F is the one, and G minor is the two. Now that's why it's really important to know about scale degrees and where chords fall in them. I've got a ton, tons of videos on that kind of stuff if you guys are interested in it. But it's important to think in those terms when you talk about phrasing, all right? The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the first part of the solo, which sounds like this. Okay, now that solo, that first part of it, lasts over the C part, if I have it, and then the last part of that phrase happens on the change to the F. Now that stuff is important, right? If I'm taking, we can look at as the A minor pentatonic uh, position shape or the A minor scale, which again, I'm thinking key of C because that first chord is C. So the first thing I'm doing is going here. Now what note is this? This is a G on the B string, okay? G is in the chord of C major. A C major is a C, an E, and a G. Something very common in solos, phrasing-wise, is starting on the fifth of the chord that you're doing. You don't always necessarily want to start on the, on the root of the chord. You might think, okay, a cool place to start a solo is uh, on a C. I'm just going to go to a C. But really, you know, we want to kind of take... Uh, the solo somewhere, we want to phrase it in a way that makes it interesting. And a good way to do that is to stay in a note that is in the chord, but then kind of work your way around that scale. So this is a good example of that where I'm just kind of doing a pick rake into the fifth of that chord, G. And then I'm just playing around with notes in the key of C. These are the five notes that I'm using. Now it's not really a pentatonic thing, but it is like just a C major thing. I've got a G, an F, an E, a D, and a C. And I'm just working my way through it. I'm not gonna go through every single note because if you wanna do this, play it, use these notes and use your ear to find out how to play this. The important thing is I'm ending the phrase on this note right here, the fifth fret on the G string, which is a C, all right? Now, the inter interesting thing about that, phrasing-wise, is I hit that C when I'm no longer on the C chord. I hit that when it goes to the F chord, right? That C to F, all right? Now, in F major, the chord F major is just an F and A and a C. So in F's chord, 
that C is the fifth of that chord. Now remember, in the solo, I started on the fifth of C, which is a G, I started on a G, and I just played around however I wanted to do it until I got to the F chord, and I landed on F's fifth, a C, okay? So there's kind of like a direction of how this is going, and honestly, I was not thinking about this when I was playing it, I was just kind of like live playing it, and I ended up recording it, but that's why it sounds good, and that's kind of why I landed there. Because eventually you get the, the shape patterns kind of in your hand, and then you don't have to think about it so much anymore, right? But that's kind of, I guess, like the, the phrasing theory behind it. All right, now the next time, we're gonna do the same thing, pick right. Into this thing right here, right? So I start in the same spot, here, all right? This is the G, but now I'm gonna do something that's more triad-based. Okay? Again, this is what's happening over that C chord again in that C to F progression. Now, something that's really interesting is a C major bar chord right here is going to give you everything you need to do really cool licks, all right? So this right here is actually a voicing of a C major chord. Eight on the E string, eight on the B string, nine on the G string, all right? So now I'm starting in the same spot that I was on that G, but now I'm kind of getting into this position I'm just playing around that kind of triad with an extra note, and then I'm ending on C again, but now I'm ending on the next highest C. And you'll notice I'm not playing like this. I'm actually ending on this C. Same note, but the reason I'm taking it there is because I think it sounds good when you slide up to it. And then when you have the B string, you have a lot more room to add vibrato. If I was gonna do this exact same uh, vibrato here, I'm off there, right? I, I have less options on the high string. I can really kind of milk it a little better on the B string, right? So that's why I chose that C instead of that C. And again, it's the next octave C, so it's really the same kind of thinking. But that second phrase is gonna end on the higher octave C. So again, I'm starting on the fifth of the chord, right? I end on the, the, the root note, which is actually the fifth of the next chord, and then the second part of the phrase, the second phrase ends on the higher thing. So we're, we're already going somewhere. We're going in like a direction, okay? After that, we have the G minor part to F, okay? So G minor, and this would be G Dorian. This is the mode. I wanted to do something modal. I wanted to talk about what makes that G minor special in the case of this, right? So what happens here is I'm gonna take a G, the fifth fret of the D string. And I'm gonna do something like that, okay? This is why you wanna learn your modes because you can really kind of do some cool, interesting phrasing stuff with modes. What that means is there are, there's a special sound of all the notes that you can play over the two chord in a key. Again, G minor is the second chord in the key of F. So if we just took the first six notes of G's scale, the G Dorian scale, we have five, seven, eight, five, seven, nine. The things that make this particular spot interesting is a minor third and that six right there, okay? So I wanna really emphasize these two notes together over that G to kind of phrase it in a particular way. So I'm gonna climb up the scale and then come back. So one, two, three, six, five in the modal scale. And I'm just hammering on those notes that make it special the second time around. And then I'm just going into the next position, same idea, and then ending it. And then ending it on a triad, which again, there's that C again once we get back to C major, which is where that song goes. So again, kind of like a lengthy explanation, but I think something about phrasing kind of demands that kind of level of uh, explanation. Because once you kind of see how things work, you can really start building and crafting solos. And I'm, I'm a fan of having kind of like that length of a solo. I'm not a guy who's gonna go off and solo indefinitely. Yeah? But I think in short bursts, that's really the way to tackle it. Let me know if you have any questions. I just started on your finger picking masterclass last night for this very reason, seriously. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of us have some extra time right now. 
I feel like it's kind of inappropriate to be like slogging masterclass sales at this moment in history. But uh, again, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna make all of the courses half off. So uh, some of them I've never actually had on sale before, but if you are interested, again, I'm trying not to be like a sleazy sales guy right now, but a lot of people have asked for uh, different coupon codes and stuff. So it's in the description if you guys are interested. When you think Sean can't be dark and morbid, haha, ha, love the track and the interesting choice of voicings band. Thank you very much. Uh, this is on the original music I posted last week. Uh, working on a lot of cool new music. I appreciate everybody who checked it out. I really like how that one turned out. And I've got some more coming soon. So make sure you check that out. If you haven't already, it's on Spotify and iTunes and stuff. But there's gonna be a lot more music coming soon, so stay tuned. Hey, you mentioned going to LA, but you didn't tell us what's going on out there. Do you have a secret project in development or are you going out there for gigs? Yeah, so I went to Los Angeles uh, last Friday. I took one look around and I was like, hell no. Went right back to LAX and flew back to Florida and I'm waiting it out here. Uh, yeah, so I have a lot of cool stuff going on in LA, or I did anyways. Hopefully still making my soap opera acting career something that is coming to fruition. So some stuff in the works there. Not sure if it's gonna turn out now because of everything. Also, I have uh, buddied up with some video game composers, Finishing Move Inc. Those are my dudes. And I spent the one day that I was there with them. Uh, they've done like the video game soundtracks for like a lot of the Halo games and Borderlands 3 and Crackdown 3. And those guys are like legit pros. So you're gonna see them on the channel a lot because I'm kind of like part of their company now. Uh, as soon as all the dust settles because those guys are awesome So I'll link you to some of their stuff too in the description and show show them some love because they're in the squad now Normally, I would say TikTok is a horrible idea kind of like eating your own vomit But you can't not laugh watching you prance and spin around I gotta say though you look marvelous, but your hair might be abusing hard drugs So this is in response to the TikTok videos. I was doing with uh, Katie last week I had mixed reactions on my dance moves, but I thought they were pretty lit. I was on fire and this is how it looks. Uh, as for my hair, being on hard drugs, I guess what can I say other than you should probably check it out for yourself. Are you for real? I thought I learned something, but instead you're clowns. Not cool. <laughs> what a clickbait. You think you're gonna learn something educational and you just see a clown. So sorry about it. <laughs> When your wife cheats on you, in French we say cocu equals victim of adultery. The word you are using may come from the French word. Good to know. When claiming that the key of D is the official key of 2020, you might not want to say, call all of those who tell me it is B flat because it showcases the fact that more people want B flat to D. I'm just gonna start calling you the B flat truthers because I had an actual poll on the video when we were discussing the official key of 2020 and the key of D greatly outnumbered B flat. B flat got a lot of upvotes for sure, but key of D was a choice. Sorry about it, get over it. B flat truthers, take your conspiracy theories elsewhere. You are the funniest man on YouTube, truly the offspring of Steve Martin and Phyllis Diller. I enjoy your teaching immensely. Well, that's a new one, Phyllis Diller, <laughs> I guess. I guess I'll take it. I've gotten the Steve Martin ones a few times before. Actually, a lot of times before, but uh, that is my first Phyllis Diller comparison, and uh, I'm very thankful for it. Do you think you can be a great musician if you only play one instrument? Oh, 100%. I mean, I think great musicians have an easier time transitioning to a second instrument if they're at all interested. But uh, some of the best musicians of all time really are just known for one instrument. Some of them are just, you know, singers and they don't play like any tactile instruments or whatever. Again, if that's something, being a multi-instrumentalist is something that you're interested in, I am 100% supportive of it. But just because someone may not, by no means does that take away from their musicianship in general. I just kind of lose my attention very quickly with guitar, so I jump around to other things. How often do you get called PewDiePie? A thousand times a day? And PewDiePie's evil twin. Now why am I his evil twin? What is evil about this? I feel if any, if we were twins, again, I don't even think we look alike, he would be the evil one, right? I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is just kind of how I feel about it. For listening homework this week, I'm throwing you to the new Nora Jones single that just came out a couple days ago because we all need a little bit of chill in our lives right now. So check that out. Nora's the absolute queen, one of my all-time favorites, great singer-songwriter. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, the website. Again, those master classes are on sale. Not shameless plug, feel weird about it, but it's happening. So anyways, let me know what you think. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.